ultrasound has proved itself extremely useful for examining the vascular systems of both the upper and the lower extremities. This program teaches the basics of imaging the lower extremity deep veins. The lower extremity deep veins are challenging structures to access with ultrasound. Because many vessels lie so close to each other in the lower extremity, differentiating one from the other can be difficult. In addition, their proximity to bones presents difficulties. Both anatomical knowledge and training in special techniques are required for success in the deep venous examination. Part one of this tape presents normal anatomy of the entire lower extremity venous system. Part two demonstrates a transverse protocol for surveying the vessels from the proximal to the distal thigh. Part three demonstrates a longitudinal protocol for the thigh vessels. And part four offers an imaging approach to the calf veins using both transverse and longitudinal views for these vessels. The next patient is coming for an examination for possible deep vein thrombosis. The main reason for the lower extremity ultrasound examination is to look for thrombi, which can be fatal if not treated. As a thrombus forms in the calf veins and enlarges, it can break loose from its origin in the leg and travel upstream to ultimately pass through the heart and lodge in the lung. Let's trace the flow of blood from the foot back to the heart so that we can see the path that a thrombus might take. Blood from the foot travels up the lower leg through several paired calf veins. An artery runs between each pair. The major calf vein pairs are perineal, the posterior tibial, and the anterior tibial. Note that each pair of veins joins at a trunk before connecting to the next vein as they carry blood up the leg. All of these calf veins eventually empty into the popliteal vein behind the knee. The posterior tibial paired veins begin just behind the malleolus on the medial side of the leg. They lie posterior to the tibia and join together as the posterior tibial trunk. Then they unite with the perineal trunk to become the popliteal vein behind the knee. The perineal veins are located deeper and more posterior than the tibials. They lie along the posterior surface of the fibula. The anterior tibial veins lie on the lateral side of the leg, beginning in front of the lateral malleolus. They travel between the tibia and fibula and empty directly into the popliteal vein. Sometimes you can see the gastrocnemius veins which empty directly into the popliteal vein. These veins drain the muscles. The lesser saphenous vein also joins the popliteal vein. Because it lies between the muscle fascia and the skin, it is called a superficial vein. It travels straight up the back of the leg and connects high in the popliteal. As the popliteal travels upward, it becomes the femoral vein, often called a superficial femoral. The femoral vein courses around the medial side of the leg and up through the adductor canal, a natural channel between the muscles. The femoral vein extends up the medial thigh until it joins with the profunda femoris or deep femoral vein high in the leg. These joined veins now become the common femoral vein. The common femoral runs a very short distance until it joins the greater or long saphenous vein. This vein is the longest vein in the body. It originates in the foot, travels in the superficial fascia along the medial leg, and empties into the common femoral vein at the groin. Crossing the inguinal ligament, the common femoral vein becomes the external iliac vein in the pelvis. The external iliac vein is then joined by the internal iliac vein and becomes the common iliac vein. Finally, the common iliac veins from both the right and left sides join at the level of the umbilicus to become the inferior vena cava, and the inferior vena cava drains directly into the heart. 
The lower extremity ultrasound examination is an important diagnostic test for deep venous thrombosis, DVT. It can help identify any thrombosed venous areas or exclude thrombus as a cause of the symptoms of many other medical problems. To begin the lower extremity examination, elevate the patient's head at least 15 degrees in the reverse Trendelenburg position. For most adult lower extremities, you will probably need a 4 or 5 megahertz linear transducer. In this lab, they use the transverse orientation to get a quick overview of the vessels. Some labs start with a longitudinal plane. To begin transversely, position the transducer in a transverse orientation at the groin. The patient's left is shown on the right of the screen as though you're looking straight into the anatomy cross-section. Always take the time to optimize the B-mode image. As you go down the leg in the transverse view, evaluate each segment for compressibility. Direct compression techniques are best performed in transverse because in the longitudinal plane you can't see if the transducer has slipped off the vein. Just compress lightly with the transducer and watch the image. The walls co-apt or touch as they completely compress and disappear. When you release, the vein is larger. Compression is also an easy way to differentiate between an artery and a vein. The vein will normally compress, while the artery will not. Repeat this maneuver every two to three centimeters along the length of the vein in the transverse view. You want to start with the iliac vessels and move down to survey the anatomy. Here are the iliac vessels. As you survey the vessels in cross-section, you can use color flow and spectral Doppler to help identify which is the artery and which is the vein. The artery has a pulsatile flow and the vein has a phasic or respiratory flow pattern. After you have located the external and internal iliacs, begin to follow the external iliac down the thigh across the inguinal canal where it becomes the common femoral. Here is the saphenofemoral junction where the greater saphenous branches medially. Always at least confirm that the saphenous vein is patent. If you have any doubts about patency, follow the saphenous further down the leg. Next, continuing the cross-sectional survey, you come to the junction of the femoral and the profunda femoris veins. The profunda dives deep, so you won't be able to see very much of it. At the distal thigh, the vein dives into the adductor canal, where it is often difficult to compress. A good technique there is to use one hand on the posterior thigh to press the vein toward the transducer. If you can't demonstrate compressibility well in the transverse views, you will want to use special care in the longitudinal portion of the exam. Now go back to the groin and take a look longitudinally. In the longitudinal exam, anatomy toward the feet will be on the right of the screen and anatomy toward the head will be on the left of the screen, as though you are looking at the section from the right side of the patient. Adjust B-mode steering perpendicular to the vessel walls for the best image detail. Also, remember that color box steering and placement are important for optimal color filling. Since venous flow moves at lower velocities than arterial, select a lower color scale to emphasize the lower flow. In this vein, color fills the lumen. Lack of filling might indicate a thrombus. No flow may indicate a totally occlusive thrombus. Imaging at the groin longitudinally, you can see the external iliac vein as it crosses the inguinal canal and becomes the common femoral vein. From an anteromedial approach, you can see the greater saphenous vein joining the common femoral. To make sure there is not an occlusion proximal to the common femoral vein, 
somewhere in the iliacs or in the inferior vena cava, take a Doppler trace. Place the Doppler sample in the common femoral vein. The spectrum should show a spontaneous phasic flow pattern. This means there is normal flow. To further demonstrate patency, you can manually augment the flow. With a Doppler sample in the common femoral vein, squeeze distally on the thigh or the calf. Firmly squeeze and watch as the flow accelerates. Release and the flow returns to normal. If the Doppler flow is not spontaneous, phasic and augmentable, you need to investigate further. Now move to the junction of the femoral and the profunda femoris veins. Here you will need to adjust steering because the vessel takes a slight change in direction. Also invert the map to keep the color display blue for the vein. This bifurcation is a common sight of thrombus collection. Follow the femoral vein along the thigh. Color flow is a useful tool to evaluate a partially occlusive thrombus. If you see color, you will know that blood is getting through. But be careful not to have the color gain set so high that it obscures any thrombus. Here you can see the vein as it parallels the artery. As you travel along the leg, continue to use color, Doppler and augmentation maneuvers. You'll find that many people have duplicate veins. Just evaluate any you find along the way. At the adductor canal, move the transducer to the medial side of the thigh and follow the femoral as far as possible until it becomes the popliteal vein. Since this is a difficult area, you may need to adjust the image controls to bring in the important parts of the image. You may also want to use a lower frequency transducer here. To achieve a good view of venous blood in the calf, good patient positioning is essential. Here, the patient's leg is flexed over a pillow. This helps keep pressure off the knee and keeps the veins from constricting. To begin, position the transducer posterior to the knee in a longitudinal orientation, as far up as possible. This positioning should display a long, straight segment of the popliteal. You may see the insertion of the lesser saphenous high in the popliteal. Watch for the gastrocnemius veins in the mid-popliteal area. Don't confuse the gastrocnemius with a lesser saphenous. The gastrocnemius courses through the muscle and has an associated artery. The lesser saphenous is a superficial vein and travels close to the skin. It does not have an associated artery. The popliteal and calf veins travel close to the bone, so you'll need to focus deeper to see these deep vessels. Follow the popliteal as it courses through the popliteal fossa into the calf. The first deep vein to branch off the popliteal is the anterior tibial vein. Then the popliteal branches into the posterior tibial and perineal veins. Observe the branch area carefully to assure full color filling of the vessels. This area is both difficult to image and a likely site for thrombus. Now evaluate the popliteal in the transverse orientation. You can see the popliteal artery and vein as they course together. Continue to use compression maneuvers to demonstrate the lack of thrombus as you follow the popliteal through the popliteal fossa. The first deep vein to branch off the popliteal is the anterior tibial. Here's the junction of the posterior tibial and the perineal trunks at the distal popliteal. The perineals are deeper than the posterior tibials and run along the fibula. We can see each of the calf veins branch into a pair of veins that travel together with the associated artery in between. Here you see the paired perineal veins. Remember, the perineals run along the fibula. Now let's take a look without color to see the relationship of superficial muscular and deep veins. 
Here we see the lesser saphenous vein just beneath the surface. Focusing deeper, you can see the gastrocnemius as it travels through the muscle. And here you can see the deep veins as they travel close to the bone. To complete the evaluation of the paired calf veins, you may want to have the patient sit up and position her legs like this. The force of gravity causes the blood to pool in the calf veins, making them easier to image. To look at the veins longitudinally, position the transducer along the medial tibial ridge. Follow the posterior tibial trunk as it branches into the paired perineal and tibial veins. Look for an artery between each pair of veins. Use augmentation to better demonstrate filling here. Here you see both the perineals and the posterior tibials. The perineals are the deeper veins. To scan the anterior tibial veins, position the transducer on the lateral side of the tibial border. Follow the anterior tibial veins as they ascend the leg between the tibia and the fibula. These veins rarely form thrombus, so they are often evaluated only if symptomatic. This tape has presented Normal Anatomy of the Lower Extremity Venous System. It has described a protocol for transverse and longitudinal examination of the proximal to distal thigh vessels, and has demonstrated a protocol with techniques for imaging the calf vessels using both transverse and longitudinal planes. For information on other Hewlett-Packard vascular ultrasound instructional materials, contact your HP representative.